Good morning. So uh, today, continuing with uh, building uh, Snippet Pixie Next, um, and part of that is now building a daemon and CLI client um, that uh, communicate with Dbus. So uh, let's get into the ID, um, see where we were last time. Okay, we'll get rid of that stuff there. So um, last time uh, for the daemon, um, we basically took the very basic um, Dbus server example and uh, just got it working um, with our own path um, and interface for the Dbus service. Um, and produce a sort of uh, Pong response to a ping. Um, in the client, uh, we basically did the same um, based off um, uh, the Dbus, uh, the Go Dbus client example that, that I've proposed as a pull request on the project, actually. Um, we simply connect to the uh, Dbus um, session um uh, grab the the interface object um and then call ping um store in the result in a in a string um and then we just print it out so that uh, i should have that around somewhere um that's actually still running here <laughs> Um, and I'm in the client here. If I um, go run the client, it gets a pong back. And you saw on the server, it does a, a little log there, sent a pong from the ping. So um, that's great. So that's basically um, a quick test to make sure that we can communicate on the Dbus server uh, service. But we need to do. Um, a bunch of stuff to get this into a shape that we can use properly um, as a daemon um, that connects to our snippet pixie database um, and serves data from that and so on so we need to um, massage this little example um, into something a little bit more um, maintainable so what we're going to do is we're going to start basing it on this um, blog post that I found um, from Elijah Eftimov um, about um, demonizing your Go programs, um, which is based on a, a Matt Meyer um, post, partly anyway. So the big thing here is that um, you separate everything, so you have a main which basically is as small as possible um, and then says, hey, let's um, pass everything off to the very basics, off to a run function. Um, and in the run function, it does um, the basics required to get things going. So in the run, you're passing in a context. Um, and in here they've got the config at that point, but I'm not sure that stays. Um, possibly, I'll have a look at it later. Um, and then um, as this blog post progresses, this run um, gets a little bit more um, fleshed out, as does the main. Um, the main becomes better at handling signals from Unix and so on. So um, we're going to kind of basically jump to the end. Um, it's a great article. I recommend reading it. It steps you through all the processes and thinking about how to make a, um, a robust daemon. Um, so I'm going to go almost to the end. Well, Let's actually just jump to the example code. Um, I will, this, this example code that um, he links to, that he's created, um, isn't actually complete compared 
the um, the blog post is missing a few bits and bobs. So we'll, we'll keep switching back and forth. Um, but I'm going to basically take this as an example. Um, I'm going to take some of this code just to get up and running quickly because the meat of the daemon is the actual services that we're going to create in it. So um, let's take um, let's take some cues from here. So what should we do? Let's start by moving our run stuff out, I think. Yeah, so we'll do we'll take this little bit here. So we've just got the uh, the meat of the run. And then put that here. Close it off. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to have um, a structure for the uh, config. So this, all this stuff here, the ping and so on, that's going to go soon. Uh, we'll move that in, out into another file. Um, so in the meantime, let's just create something here. So uh, we're going to have a config. Um, are we though? Do we need that at the moment? I guess so. What's this storing in here? Yeah, everything related to the flags. I think the only f thing we're going to have that in a daemon. Well, the primary thing is going to be where is the snippet pixie database. And then there will be settings for things like Um, are we auto expanding? Um, what's the hot key? But they, they will be stored in the database. And it's the, the CLI and the settings app that we're going to build that are actually going to provide those informa that information to the daemon to, to go save that information. That's my plan anyway. But the one thing that we do need to know is where is the database that we're going to store this information. So I think all we really need um, is a DB path. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that will do it. So this is a struct. Um, what should we call? I'll just call it a DB path, I guess. Always change it later. So um, that's it. We've got a config um, struct now. Um, let's okay. Let's get this stuff out of here because it's going to be in the way for the moment.
that's going to actually thinking about that's going to change things up a bit. Yeah. Okay, let's do that though. Take that out. Um, and in the debum, we'll create a new go file. Um, just create debus at the moment. Yeah, we want to keep it in package main, I think. At least at the beginning, we can always namespace it later. Um, and we'll just call this um, uh, I guess we can call it init. I might return an error. Just chuck, let me just chuck this in for a moment. Yeah, I you know you're going to be, it's not, not going to be happy at the moment. Um, and then we'll just take this stuff out as well. Let's just get it out of the way so we can see what's what. Okay, so that's gone, that's gone. moment at the bottom. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to create um, a little init function for the config. Um, so one of the things I noticed in uh, the example is that um, for starters it's not using the input for where we're writing output. So here we want to change that to out and here we're going to change that to out. So now the log, any login is going to be to the IO writer that is passed in. And then as per uh, the example, got this run command now here. So we'll grab that. Um, okay, so, so that's where the meat of the stuff is going to happen in, in the run command down here. Um, and then, depending on how it returns, it might end up um, logging a message to standard error um, and exiting with the thing. Otherwise, it's just going to fall out normally. Um, yep. So um, what we now need is that context setup stuff here. So there's a couple of things going on here. Um, basically set in uh, the go context to be of type background effectively uh, because we are in background um, and then we'll get in a particular variant of it basically by saying we can cancel um, and then that's going to be able to um, be passed through to, we'll eventually be using this context um, in our calls to the database, um, database functions and so on. 
Um, and so if someone tells the demon to stop, to go away, um, that will ripple up through the application um, and the like any in progress database operation and so on will be cancelled, rolled back, and then the app um, exits, hopefully gracefully. Um, but we'll see how we go there. So in our main, we're going to set up a context that we need. Uh, we're going to set it to cancel. And then what's the next thing we do? So you'll notice that um, in the little demo um, of the dbus server, um, after setting up everything up, um, and doing this export, which says, hey, um, I'm a, I've got this function available um, at this place. Um, and then registering um, the interface, it then does this. Uh, so it's basically listening, um, ready. It's now ready to listen to uh, dbus messages on that interface. It then does this select with no arguments um, because it's just a little um, example. That's just like um, a little hack because that blocks. There's nothing, it's never going to resolve. So it's effectively doing a, a, for, a for loop, which is never going to exit, kind of. It's not, but um, so that that's basically a blocker just so that it doesn't exit. Um, we don't really want to do that. Um, what we want to do is as per the, um, the blog post, we want to manage um, the app a little bit better than that. We want to handle our Unix signals. So um, the um, so if you'd like kill the process or control C and pass on interrupts. Um, so we're going to basically just crib this um, because all it does is it says, right, um, let's create a channel uh, which is going to handle our signals. Um, and then um, it's going to notify um, the channel whenever there's an interrupt or sick up. Although I'll come back to that in a minute because that's not quite up to date with the blog post. Um, and then it says, OK, um, at some point when the app completes, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, I want to make sure that that signal um, tells the channel to stop. Um, and then it cancels everything, which is where that context comes in. So that gives everything a chance to clean up, basically. Um, so we're going to take, and then, uh, then it starts a go routine um which is effectively a lightweight thread um uh, that um basically does a for loop forever um uh, with another select here but in this case what we're doing is we're passing in any results from a signal into that channel um it's looking at that and saying right have we received anything um, on that signal channel. Um, and then if so, it does a little check to say, oh, um, if it's a sick up, that means reload. So it's reanalyzing the, the config. Um, if it's an interrupt, then we want to exit. So it does the cancel and exit. Um, and then the other version here is that the context, um, at some point could say, yep, I'm done. Um, um, in which case 
it does the same thing effectively as an interrupt. Um, it does an OS exit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're basically just going to grab that, um, and then I'm going to make a little change to it um, based on uh, the blog post, which has slightly up, more up-to-date stuff. So, got a few things to fix up in a minute, like we need have to have a, an init function on the config, which we'll come to. Um, yeah. So here we go, we're creating a config, and then we need to go do an init in a minute. Uh, but before I forget, uh, one of the things they do in here all right so you see we have a sig int as well as a sig term uh, and it does a log i don't know did that do a log no Yeah, uh, I would like to do that. So I'm basically going to switch that out for that. That's well done. There's a more up to date version here. Yeah, we'll take the whole thing there so we know we've got everything. I think at some point I might um, propose a PR on that. Yeah, was that? Yeah, it was the full goat funk. So we'll take that. Pass that in. So now it's looking for a sigint and a sig term, but we don't actually have all of them here. So back in the uh, blog post, there should be an example. There we go, which includes sig int. We'll just grab that. No use in typing. So grabbing all that now, although I wonder if the interrupt is a variation on that. Hmm. That's interesting actually, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if that's an upgrade. That might be the difference. Let's have a look at that. go this route, I can get to the standard packages quickly. So we have OS signal and syscall.
Okay. Mm, okay, it might be better to use the OS signal stuff there. But where's... Where's interrupt? Maybe it's in the main package. Hmm. Oops. Okay, so it's actually better by the looks of things to use interrupt and kill. Let's just double check syscall. Um, just do a quick for a second. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's maybe too low level. I probably should stick with the OS stuff, bugs and so that means that the that's correct. Um although it should really have OS kill in there as well. That's the difference. It needs interrupt and kill. So, all right, cool, we'll do that. Um, um, and for the moment, I don't actually have any reason to reload the config. So I might take that out as well, because that's something we can implement later. So we'll have interrupt and kill. Not that you can actually catch kill, which is probably the why reason why it's not there. Double check that. I guess we could try. Um, okay, so. We're going to catch interrupt and kill, um, and we therefore need to handle those here. Should 
Should I do them as separate? No. I think it's more likely that you're just getting interrupted. I don't know that we're going to... Um... Yeah. We'll see. Okay, and now I'm going to take out this. So really the switch is only doing the one thing. For the time being. Um, and then on here, if the context done, we're done. Don't even know how that would happen, but I'll click into that. Okay. Now that probably means we don't need syscall anymore. So main comes in, creates the context, background, signals, config, uh, defers, a stop and cancel, goes into a go routine, which does a continuous for loop, um, waiting for stuff in the background. Then, so that's all in the background, um, and what's going to happen is then it'll cancel or exit um, the app. And then, um, while that's running in the background as a thread, uh, we're going to call run, um, and we're passing it in the context that we created, uh, the config, and stand it out to tell it where we're going to log stuff um, and if there's an error we exit out so here we've got the meat of the stuff so we have to do something in here Well, first, I guess we better do that in it. Uh, which is going to be a very, 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 very light version of this. <laughs> uh, we're not going to have any flags. Bar one, I guess. Could have one. Do we want to do flags? So, pass in, config, and the args. So, it's args. Okay. So, that we don't even need, but I mean, that's all based on um, another library that we're not going to use. I'm just going to use the standard library. Flags. Yep. Um, right, so let's do that. Let's just double check. Get sure of that. Don't need that anymore. Uh, we'll just use flag. Okay, we're just going to want a string, aren't we? For the DB path. Yeah. 
I don't think we'll really, uh, probably ever use it. Um, so let's say, okay, let's get rid of all this. Um, and we will we'll use this format because I want to do two of them. Uh, so actually. So he's doing a different format there. Okay. Let's so have some examples here. Okay, that's interesting. So, oh wow, okay. Yeah, don't do that. Okay.
Right, okay, so new flag set takes the name, which in this case is command line arg. Uh, what's that being used? Oh, yeah, I've got it on there. Right, yeah, we don't want that. What we want is either string Okay, I'm going to do string var. So output sets the destination on few usage and now it's here there as no as standard error is used. Okay, right. That's important. We don't want that. Okay. Okay then, I think I, I understand how to use this thing now, just about. So it's basically I want to do this. Um, So what we're going to do is flag new flag set um, and then arg0 is correct. And we want to exit on error. All right. And then Don't want to do that. What I do want to do is flags set output and then I really think it would be better. Well, I presume it's taken writer. Yeah, output IR writer. Okay, cool. All right, we'll pass it out. And then here, we use the same thing of um,
Neue Leute. Aber passt da. Out. So why do we do a pass? So just to validate. Okay, so it actually just does the pass in. Fine, okay, so what we want to do then is um, tags, um, string var, um, to the address of c.dbpath. We want database then we want a default Hmm. Okay. We'll have, um, DB path here. Well, let's just call it default. DB path. And then I presume it's some description. At the moment, so we need a default version of that, which is the XDG path. And I want a data file. Ah, inches in relative path. That's a good point. Can 
I get a day to die? What does that do then? What we're going to do then is well, can't forget D option as well. It uses the same thing. Now we don't need to do any of that. And then here, let's change that. Let's not have database path, let's have file name. The reason being is I want it always to be stored in the user's standard directory yeah I mean to be honest not even sure I want them to change it anyway but anyway uh, I'll keep that default db database file name See, that's what I want. What I want is I want a ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> that's what I wanted. Okay. Hmm. 
Right, so I think I'll use that in the config message. So actually, so let's change this then. Um, yeah, I think we'll go back to DB path because we do want it to be relative to data home. So Okay, we'll have um, DB path usage is going to be equal to relative data snippets snippet. Database, no, I'll just call it database path. Database path, no. Uh, words, database path relative to and then I need to get the XDG Um, thing. Okay. Oops, did that wrong again. Okay. dot data home oops Okay, that's a full salon I just got. Okay, so I will then have a default DB path. zero, which is going to be the name of the daemon. Uh, yeah, that's that. Plus zero. Again, plus dot db. So in theory, assuming I call this daemon snippet pixie or snippet pixie d or something like that, um, that's where it's going to be. So it'll be snippet pixie d slash snippet pixie d dot db in the user's default directory for saving application data. Um, yeah. So that should do that. Okay. So we have some flags, in theory. Um, 
I'm going to have to test that soon. Well, none of this is tested yet. We'll have to do that. Um, so we have config. Get in initialized. On run. And That's interesting. Why would we do that? So in theory, because I set exit on error, this will never get here. And we don't really need anything back. So let's, although we won't be able to test it, will we? What did, uh, what did they do in that? Same as I did, but I am a little confused. Because there's no no handler for the config in it. Exit. Okay, well, I'm going to see what happens. The usual thing here is so in the run, yeah, just return the error. Okay. Um, so if uh, it's not equal to nil, turn error. Again, towards the end, I need to kind of pack up in a minute. I don't actually have a stand up today, but um, I do need to get on with my day. I've got stuff to do. So I'm just going to prepare for... I'll do a quick run of this, make sure it kind of works.
although it's not going to do anything. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to complete this in the next session. So to do um, set up uh, dbus. server here. Okay. She set up and run. No, I need to set up because it's not really doing that. So I've got a config. Let's just check the main here now. Does the channel stuff uh, sets up the cancelling out? Does interrupt and kill? Hopefully, we've not tested any of this yet. Um, and then it does a run, potentially return in an error, which will get logged. Uh, and then we exit. So, in theory, that little daemon now will on run do a config pass let's um. Let's just log what we've got as the uh, database path here, just for output. Log. Um, yeah, we'll print F. database path SMV, whatever that's going to be, which should be DB path. See if that works in a minute. All right, so I think we've got the basics there. Debus is going to be a mess. Hmm. So here, we don't want to panic, we'll just return. And I think what we'll do Just pass in um, writer.
turn over again there. Grabbed the string there. I'll oh, just name already taken. Okay. But we'll just do that. There is new. Turn that. So we're going to return a uh, error that says name already taken. Let me try and do that. Uh, so, yeah, I probably should say dbus, so we know what's what. Down here, I mean, we'll change that, but do that. In fact, that means we don't need that because we're already setting log before we get here. And I guess that's redundant, is it? Unreachable? Ah, oh, yeah, okay. It is because of this. But that's fine, we're getting shot of that. So all this is going to change later anyway. It's just demo code at the moment. So why is that complaining? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I keep forgetting. Init is a uh, kind of reserved function. So. Um, What we can do instead here, though, is at some point when we actually do use this, I'll probably want to pass in the config. So uh, what we'll do here That's a pass in. That's a config. Uh, now what? Oh, yeah. That's interesting actually because you might be changing mm. Okay, let's change that package. Hmm. 
That's true. I don't really want to do that either. Okay, well, let's call this something else then. I'll do. Init debus. Okay, I think that's the basics there. We're not going to call it. I'm not going to use it at the moment. Okay, then demon main. Should do its thing. Okay. Let's see what happens. Kill that off because that's now gone. So go run squid demon. Hey, may not know. Is it going to run? Yes, it did its job. Interesting path, though. Huh. Now, if I make it, say, minus D, ribble, ribble, db there we go although that's different to what I actually wanted I guess that's right. That's right. Okay, that's fine. So if I build this. And I run it. Okay. Yeah, I'll need to strip that out. Because I can't actually run that. Um, but, yeah, so we'll clean that up. In theory, So I can do like database equals www.db just for short. That works too. Great. Okay. Hanging around. And I'll need to do a make file soon. Um good. All right, so we're at a point there where we have our config being checked, but we are not doing anything in the run to kind of block. Um, do I have 10 minutes to sort that out? Probably do. 
Let's have a quick look. Okay. I want that. I don't want to do any tick stuff yet because we've should in theory set up a DBus server before we hit this. So we're just going to wait for the context done and then this stuff in main will otherwise kill it off. So yeah, so we'll just grab that for loop. And we'll finish that select and that for and yep, we're never going to get there. So that will now make it kind of brain dead. I'll do nothing. Let's just do go run that. There you go. Standing, sitting there doing nothing. If I hit control C, great. Got sigint sigterm extent. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Right. Um, and then the dbus server side of things. So this should be a log now. I'm just going to log it. This is just like a little dummy function that returns a string and potentially an error, dbus error. So we have ping type given a value of pong which is actually just a string. Okay, so in theory, I think that will work. It's just going to set everything up. And as long as there's not an error, ah, we've got a connection closed though. Hmm. Okay, so we don't want to do that. What we want to do is return the connection so we can keep hold of it. So potentially return an error and also a What D bus 
on, I guess. Winter. So we're going to turn in nil, an hour, nil an hour, and the connection here, nil an hour. Uh, and then we're not doing a defer here. We need to kill it off here. So connection close. Don't care about the error. Because we're already in an error state. Same here. In theory, we don't have a connection here. Um, and then jobs are good and return in a connection. And then in the daemon, Do that can go really early on. Um, what we'll call this, we'll call this, um, D bus connection. I mean, I might have an error. Um, and we're going to be calling C dot init D bus. Um, if we have an error, then we're just going to return it. Anyways, we will defer dbus, oops, dot close. And we'll probably wrap that in a little ignore because we don't really don't care. Okay. So we've just done that. <laughs> okay. And This little debug message can go here. Um, and I'll just put to do on that to get rid of it later. Okay. 
So in theory, we've got our DBoss server back. A little example one that just does a ping pong. Let's give it a go. Ah. Yeah, I haven't set up as an interface. And we don't really want it to be. It's like a a new it's a new dbus connection. That's what I should have called it. Okay. Um let's change that. So instead we'll call this new dbus con and we're all passing config just in case uh, I'm not sure we're going to use it okay so we should get back a connection there that's a good idea do that and then in the daemon Get a new dbus connection for that config. Do the thing, do the da, yeah, okay. Fine. That should be better. Undefined. Because I'm not included in the file. Okay, well that's something I've not done before. This is uh, probably go one-on-one, -on -one, but how do I import another file? Do I... Do I just import it? It's package main. That's something I've not done in my learnings. Go bang import another file, same package. <laughs> See what we get on that. Here we go. <laughs> That's what I thought. What? You do need go past set directory. I 
Well, that's ancient though, that answer, so... Is that still... Ah, uh, okay. Go run might not be good. Right, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so there's a go run in different problem there. So in theory, if I do that, okay, now it works. Right, so if I go back to my client, go run the example there. Bing bong. Yay. Okay. Now let's just double check that it works with a build. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Smart. And then I can cut it. Good stuff. Okay. Add to get ignore. Yes. 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 Thank you. All right. So I think we're at a point where we can um no. I think we're at a point here where we should probably add this to git. Um just to save it off as a starting point. Um Lots to do, but should save it so we can move on to the next bit. So I'll just uh, what we're going to do. So here is that everything? I think we're good. Okay. As well. And initial daemon and client. Now I do. Sorted. Okay, well that's good. Uh, we now have a very basic daemon up and running that uh, does what I want to do in terms of um, sitting there waiting for instructions from a dbus client, uh, which at the moment just does a ping and gets back a pong. Um, and now and also does a little bit of um, setup uh, for options in the config. Um, the config that's probably not going to be used as flags often, <laughs> but uh, or we at least do pass them. So that's good. All right, I better get on with my day. Um, so. Uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching um, and you take care.